continue um, on looking at um, the use of template columns to change the default behavior. Um, you know, the, the whole idea of a framework is that a framework gives you sort of a jumping off point, gives you a starting point that you can go in and you can extend to, to do whatever you want to do. You do not expect the framework to do everything as far as um, the ability to add, change, update, or add, update, delete. You know, you're, you're going to have to write some custom coding in there. And we saw one example of that where we wrote custom coding to um, handle errors more gracefully. Rather than having it simply explode on you, we had it um, display a, a more user-friendly error message. In addition to that, we saw an example where we could add validation to um, add validation to one of the fields to make sure that it's required. All right. So we're going to continue along that theme. So we're also going to get into inserting and deleting. All right. Okay. Let me download the example that I had. Are there any veterans here today? I know there is at least one. So can, happy Veterans Day. I've been married for 12 years, I can't feel it. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't count. Right. <laughs> Sometimes marriage is like war. Yeah. War is hell, marriage is hell. You can't probably go to Afghanistan and go home. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I think I should get my own little, like, kind of like, uh, lobby area that goes. You, uh, yeah, yeah. you realize, of course, this is being recorded, right? <laughs> right. She doesn't want <laughs> but what if like you're watching and she walks by and it's like wow. that's, that sounds like your voice what were you saying you, you weren't in a war were you I can't watch I got enough classes with you as it is I'm not going to watch this one go on. I mean that kindly <laughs> I'm going to have to start doing like Arrested Development did then and put in like things that, that, that only show up after multiple viewings, you know, uh, of the show. What we're going to do today is we're going to look at what to do if we want to use a form control other than a text box. Like, for example, if we wanted to use a drop down. Um, again, why do we want to use a drop down? Well, it, it makes sense if there's a limited number of selections. You don't want to allow the user simply to pick anything. You want to restrict them to a list of, of uh, legitimate selections. Now let's think about the drop down again for a minute. Uh, remember with the drop down you have two fields. You have the description, you have the, what the user is going to see, and then you have the value kind of that exists behind the scenes, all right? And what we're going to do is we're going to extend the example we had last time, and I'm going to add an age category to each player. And we don't want them to be able to just type anything in there, all right? We want the ability for them to pick from a list of the predefined age groups. All right. Again, for the obvious reasons. Number one, why do we want to do that? Well, we don't want one person putting their age, age range as being 12 and another person saying 12 to 13 or 12 dash 13. We want to limit it to a certain number of legitimate selections. And in database terms, we have a foreign key relationship. So that column, when we add it, by necessity, has to match up with a, with a value in the other table. Now, our users aren't going to know those key values, right? We're, we're gonna, we have used an uh, auto number key in most of our tables. And our users are not going to know, like, that one stands for the 10 to 11 age group, or two stands for 12 to 13, or whatever. However, they can look at the list and select it, and behind the scenes that value gets put in. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to change the database to add a foreign key 
for age group. So let me go in the database. SQL Server example later on, but the idea is that if you have things set correctly, uh, it should just be a matter of changing the connection string, and then everything should work exactly right. There was a project I worked on where when I was at work, I would connect to a, a database server and use, it was either a SQL Server database or an Oracle database, I, I don't remember in this particular project. But then when I would take my laptop home, I didn't have, I think it was Oracle, I didn't have Oracle installed on my laptop. So what I would do is I simply would have a file that I would just flip the connection string. And when I was at home working, I would work off my local access database. When I went back into office to work on the, the, the project, I would switch the connection string. So ideally, you should be able to do that in a, in a perfect world. The SQL commands are the same, though. SQL right? commands are the same, right. The, the only thing that would be different is the manner by which you connect to the database. In other words, when you define that connection string. Yeah. And as we saw here, ideally, you're just doing that once, right? And you're using the same connection string throughout. All right, so let's look. And right now, we have a player table. And only a player table. That's right. I, I, refri I, I, I did a reset. Let me go and add an a age range table. So I'll go create. Oh, table. Go into design view. And I'll call this the age range table. And I will call the primary key to this age range ID. And I will call age range description. I did mention for many of you, if not all of you, it might have been all of you, for you to touch base with me on your database for the one lab. So, um, uh, there was a number of issues, so um, again, I know some of you don't typically come to lab, um, but you should make a point of coming and, and at least touching base with me on that. I talked to you uh, on that. Yeah, and on that note, I, was, I uh, took off an extra hour on Thursday so I can stay for lab, because my one, you're right, my one says to talk to you. Okay, yeah, and, and it's funny, I, you know, don't panic, and I, I, I probably should like say this in the syllabus or something. Don't panic, like, if you, get a, if you see a grade that seems shocking. A lot of times I do that simply because it's easier for me to, like, talk to you and point and show things to you. And then when you correct it, you'll, you'll be okay and you'll get full credit. So if you get a, a, a grade that is surprising, don't think that it's going to permanently stay that way. What if it's not surprising? What if it's not surprising? <laughs> then, the then, same, then, then the same thing applies, right? <laughs> Uh, let me, kind of washed out on the screen, I'm trying to make it darker. <coughs> Alright, so I'm going to then go and add a foreign key ID in the player table. Now, when I add that, all right, when I add that, I can't make that a required field, right? Why not? Because there's already, got, there's already people in the database. 
So what I would have to do is if I'm enhancing a database and I'm adding a field and I want that field eventually to be required, what I'd have to do is I'd have to go in and create it initially as not required, fill in the values for everyone in the table, and then I could go back and make it required. So um, it's another example of like the extra work you have to go through if you don't get the data the database design right to start out with, right? So if I was doing this from scratch, I could just make it required now. Now we have to go through an extra step of making it not required, fill in all those fields, and then make it required. And you could do a SQL statement if there was a way for you programmatically to set that. Like if you could default that or there's some way that you could determine that. Um, in this case, there really isn't a way for that to do it. Uh, I could do, do something funky like, like give everyone an age category of zero that says undefined. But then I'd have to clean that up because I wouldn't want to leave that out there. You yeah. generally don't want to leave bogus rows out in your database. So bottom line is it's more work. It's exactly why that curve is, is going up um, at an increasing rate. So let me go in and create the foreign key relationship. between the two. You do need to enforce referential integrity. One thing that I did not talk about that now is as good a time as any to mention is about cascading updated related fields and deleted related fields. I'm going to focus on deleted because that's the one typically that's used. Cascading updates would be like if I change the age range ID on a particular age range. Well, it's an auto number field. I'm never going to go change that, so that's kind of irrelevant here. What cascade delete related record means is there's a parent table and a chi child table. All right? By parent table, we mean the one that's on the one side of the one to many relationship. One age range has multiple players, each player has one age range associated with it. What cascade delete means is if I delete a row in this table, <coughs> what should I do with players that have that age range ID? Well, that's one option. The other option would be to restrict deletion. If I say cascade delete, it will do just that. It'll delete it. So if I were to delete the 10 to 12 age category for whatever reason, then it would go in, if I said to cascade delete, it would go in and try to delete all the players um, of, of that, uh, of that category, and it would go and delete them all. In this case, with only two tables, it would go and delete them all. All right? If I say not to cascade, the opposite of not to cascade is to restrict deletion. Um, and what that means is I could not delete the row in the age range table if there were players out there that had um, that age range ID. Essentially, you don't want to, like, quote, orphan any rows in that table. Let's think if there was a student and advisor table, for example. If an advisor retired and they were deleted from the database, you wouldn't want to go and say, well, I'm sorry, your advisor retired, you have to drop out of school. Sorry, our database is set up to cascade deletes. You're now gone out of the records. All right? That wouldn't make sense. So instead what you would do is you would restrict it. Then you could go in and, and for a given, and you could write a slick user interface to do this. Like, for example, a few years back when Professor Norad retired, you could write a slick user interface to look at all the people you know, that he was the advisor of and say, okay, this one goes to Zellers, this one goes to Huffman, whatever. All right, but the point is, is you'd have to do that cleanup and make sure that there were no advisees for a given advisor before you could delete them. It's entirely a situational thing. You, 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 you aren't going to always pick one or the other. All right, you decide based on a situation. 
In this case, I was going to set this not to cascade, because it doesn't make sense to me. The, it seems dangerous for me to be able to delete an age range and then take a player's information out with it. All right, so I'm going to restrict it. If there truly was an age range that was entered mistakenly, and a person got assigned to a goofy age range, then by trying to delete it and getting the error saying, hey, there's someone that has this, well, hey, that's a sign that, that maybe, maybe uh, you know, there's, a, there's an issue and, and you can go and clean it up. All right, so let me go and add some age ranges here. And I'll put in the first age range is 10 to 11. Second age range is 12 to 13. 14 to 15. 16 to 18. Let's say those are our four age ranges. Now I could go in and I could assign these to each player. And now I can go in, now that I've made sure every player has one, I can go in and say, yep, it's required. Now, this is, this is essentially warning you that you may not be able to make that change because data, integri data integrity rules have been changed and it has to check to see if it's still, the integrity is still intact. I don't think it's going to take too long with two tables and two people and four categories, so I'll say yes, and sure enough, we're in business. Now, one thing about cascading deletes is they can be in a chain. In other words, you could delete table A, there can be a cascading delete to table B, cascading delete to table C, cascading delete to table D. But then at some point, you could have a restrict delete relationship in there. The thing about deletes is that they are all or nothing. In other words, the delete and all the appropriate cascading deletes, they either all happen or none of them happen. All right? So, for example, if there were other tables involved here, if there was a table for team, for example, that had also an age range ID, and I said to cascade delete. If I try to delete it, it's not going to delete the age range and the teams, but leave some players behind. All right? It won't delete anything, or it will delete everything that you've asked for. All right. So now that we have this, let's go and look at our player info page. When you go to the design view, mm -hmm. although I probably could discover this myself, is that a, a, a automatic, or is that a live look at it? Like if I were to change something in CSS, would it automatically change on the design view? It should. Yeah. Yeah, it should. I mean, it's possible that there's some quirks, but yeah. in general, yeah, it should. All right. So. I'm going to go and I have to add the new field, right? So I'm going to go configure data source. Well, I guess I really don't have to add a new field because I said select star. All right? I didn't explicitly list them out. And I'm pulling the ID from the session variable, like we saw before. I can test the query. Notice it's showing me an age range ID of 2, which is correct. Now, in, as a general rule, if I'm updating something in a database, I only want to work at one table at a time. Because an update only updates one table at a time. So therefore, you might think, I want to join this to the age range table and get the description. 
I'm going to do that, but I'm going to do that without putting in a SQL statement, without adding that to the SQL statement. I'm going to use a drop down so that the user sees the um, description as opposed to the age range ID. All right, I click finish. All right, would you like to regenerate the detail view and data keys? And it's going to go and it's going to get rid of everything. All right, unfortunately. I'm going to do it anyhow, because sometimes when you don't do this, you can run into problems. All right? Besides, it will give us an opportunity to practice again creating the template fields for first name. So I'll click yes. And there goes our customization to that. Fortunately, I can go and fix that. I can say that I want to enable editing. I want to convert the first name into a template field. I want to edit the template, and specifically, I want to edit the edit item template, right? That is the that is what gets displayed when I'm editing this field. And specifically what I want to do is I want to add a required field validator. And I can say the error message is must enter first name, and I can say the control to validate is text box one. So we should be back to where we were last time. All right, let's run this and let's make sure that we are back. I'm going to set the default page as my start page. And I'll go and run this. MLZ. Password. Password. I log in. And there you see all this stuff, and again, I have to put in a first name. If I don't, I get an error. Otherwise, I can change it. And interesting, I'm getting an error on that. It could be a duplicate ID. It could be. <laughs> comes in handy. Let's look at our update statement. Where's our update statement? Somewhere in here. I am going to here's our update command. Bigger. Update player set f name equals question mark l name equals question mark blah 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 where player ID equals question mark. You don't have an uh, update uh, age range. I don't have the update for the age range. So in effect, what's happening is this. You're not putting anything. In. I am giving this 
I don't know exactly what the count was, seven fields, but my update statement only has place for six fields. So it gets confused. So I should be able to correct that by putting at the end, um, what was that? Age range ID. I did forget to do that. Equals question mark. Equals question mark. Thank you. All right. So now let's go and run this. That's what I hate about SQL. I always want to capitalize stuff, and then I remember it doesn't make a difference. Well, then capitalize it. I know. That's what I do. But I like being lazy. The less buttons I have to push, the better. Then don't capitalize it. Oh, but then that's bad programming techniques. <laughs> what a conundrum. I know. Might, might I suggest that if that is the biggest problem that you're experiencing, you're, you're in pretty good shape. Yeah. All right. So now, again, it did not give me the air. We should probably do something to redirect them somewhere else, but we don't really have anything to redirect them to, so you should be okay. All right. So now, if you notice, the age range ID is 2. All right. Remember that updates, insert, deletes only work on a single table at a time. <coughs> so I don't want to bring a join into this and join it to the other table. What do I want to do? I want to make that field a drop down. All right. Now, I'm going to draw on the board for a second. Here's what we have. We have the player table. And it has fields like player ID, first name, last name, and so on. One of the fields it has is age range ID. All right? And it's a foreign key. We also have our age range table. That has an age range ID and an age range description. When I change the age range ID for a player, which table am I updating? Am I updating the player table or am I updating the age range table? The table. I'm updating the player table, right? In other words, I'm not touching this table. This is a list of the age ranges that are valid for my particular league. What I'm doing is when I update in this particular page, when I'm updating the age range, I want to change the age range assigned to this particular, ta uh, to, for the, to this particular ta uh, player. All right? And I want to change it in the player table. So in other words, if I had a player who was in this age range and I want him to be in this age range, I'm not touching that table, all right? By let me rephrase that. By touching, I mean I'm not changing that table, all right? Because this table has my four age ranges in it. And when I'm done, it should also still have those four age ranges in it. That's the age range. What I'm changing, though, is I'm reassigning this person. If they were put in by mistake for age range one, I'm reassigning them so that they're now in age range two. So I'm not changing the age range table. I'm changing them. Now, how does the age range table come into play? The age range table comes into play because I don't want to allow someone to type anything in here, like 99 or 2000 or whatever. I want them to be limited to the list of valid age ranges. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a drop down. Rather than having a text box where who knows what those numbers mean, right? A user's not going to know what those mean. I'm going to give a text box that is going to have 
the description appear as a text of the options. And then I'm going to have the index, the ID number, for that to be the value that gets stuffed in here. So, let's think this through when I go into edit mode. What do I want to have happen? Right now, it's showing simply the numeric age range ID. What I want to do instead is I want to retrieve a drop down. And then I want to display the drop down and I want to take and set the initial value of the drop down to be that person's current age range. So in other words, if I'm age range 2, this should show age range 2 in there. If I was age range 4, it should show age range 4. So, I want to display a drop-down. The initial value of the drop-down is going to match what that player's age range was initially. I then go and change it. I want to take the value that I changed it to and stuff it back in the age range ID. All right? This is called double binding, all right? And you typically will, will use this with this sort of scenario. What's the double binding? The initial value comes from the age range, and the final value gets put back into the age range. So it's two directions. This gets populated based on this. Whatever I choose here gets stuffed back in there. All right. So let's go and make this happen. As we know from before, this is not the default behavior of a detail view. The default behavior for a detail view is to just pop up a text box when you're in edit mode. So going against the default behavior of the detail view, what does that mean? It means a template column. So, I'm going to go and edit the columns here. I'm going to look at age range ID, and I'm going to convert it to a template field. All right. I'm then going to go in, I'm going to edit templates, and I'm going to pick for age range ID, I want to set the edit item template. And right now it's a drop box. All right. So I want to change that to a drop down. I'm going to delete that. And I'm going to add a drop down list. All right. Where does that drop down list get its possible values from? A data source. A new data source or the current data source that we have? Current. I think it's... I would say it's a new data source. Yeah, I would say it's a new data source. Because, yeah. first of all, that data... Well, again... It what, has to hook to the age range. What, what was useful for me is describe in words what the data to populate this is. What's the data that we want to use to populate this particular drop-down? The data that we want to use is... I want a list of all the age range categories and their description. Is that what is in data source one? No. Data source one is um, one player based on the session ID. So this will be a new data source. So I'm going to go and drag our old friend the data source. If we had class on Halloween, I should have came as Bob Ross and do the lecture in his voice. Like, we're going to put a, data we're gonna put a happy right data here. source right here. Yeah. So it goes right in the template. Yeah, it goes right here. So it, yes, and it goes right in the template. Again, remember it's like with the validation. That drop-down only has like a conditional existence. It's not there all the time. 
So therefore, I'm going to put that in there. And I'm going to configure my data source. So I'm going to pick my connection. I am going to pick age range ID and age range description. Order by... I don't think it really matters in this case. I think I'll get them in the same order either way. And there we go. Wouldn't you rather just do age range description though, in this case for a drop down? Repeat that please. Wouldn't you want to just do age range description because since it's a drop down? What do you mean do age range description? Isn't the drop down going to show the ID and the description? Oh, just, just take that off. Well, oh, yeah, cool. well right. we need, the drop down needs both of them, mm -hmm. right? We need the description because that's what we want to show to the user. Okay. The user doesn't know what 1, 2, 3, and 4 is. So the user needs to see the description. But what value are we going to stuff back into the player table? We're going to stuff the, the player ID. Keep in mind, what we're defining here is the data source. This is the data we need to do our job. This is not how we are going to present the data to the user. Okay? So... Click finish. I can click on choose data source for this. Data source 2. What field do I want to display? I want to display the age range description. What field is going to be the value of that drop down list? It's going to be the age range ID. Again, description, value. Description being what's going to be presented to the user. Value being what's like behind the scenes. In the case of a drop down, this is going to be the value of the option, whereas the description is going to be between the start and end option tag. Now, we have one more thing to do. We have to make sure that the detail view knows that the value for this drop-down getting set based on the player's age range ID. And then after we're done making changes, the value goes back into the age range ID. So, I will go and I will click on Edit Data Bindings. Alright. And, Field Binding. What do I want to put that field in? I want to put it in the player's user, oh, I'm sorry, the player's age range ID. And it is double binding, I said, or, or two-way data binding. This step is probably the most, is probably the most confusing part of this, right? Because we've kind of done the other stuff before. This step verifies, okay, where, what I'm going to get the data from to populate, to, to, to make the selected value of the drop-down the correct value, and then when I'm done editing the drop-down, where does that value get put? All right. And it's going to get put in the player's age range ID. What we did before, a minute ago, when we created the data source, and we configured the data source, is we told the drop-down where to get your list of values from. This tells the drop-down where to get your initial value and where to put your final value. So that's two different things at work here. So I click OK, and now I should be all set. So let's go and look. Zellers is in age range 2. Okay. Let's go and edit that. All right. 
Does Zeller show in the proper age range? Yes. Uh, according to your example, yes. Yes. <laughs> Come on. Right. In other words, this is this is age range number two. So it shows that. That's the first part of the two-way data binding. I then go in and I change Zeller's to his correct age. And I update. <coughs> And that update took. And if I look at the database, we'll see that it changed my age range ID to 4. Okay? When would you do this? Anytime you have a foreign key relationship. Typically, your updates are going to be on one table. And you're not going to join it to other tables. You're going to use this to show a um, a drop down for this. Let's do this and again and, and look at it. Let's go and debug this again. All right, let's look at the source code. Always a good idea to look at the HTML source that gets generated. Here's a drop down. Notice the values correspond to the key, right? Because that's what we want the script to know. We want the script to use that value to put it back into the player's age range ID. Between the start and an option tag, is the description. That's what the user is going to understand. All right? 10 to 11 years old, 12 to 13, and so on. Notice that the last one has a selected attribute on it. Well, that was my age range ID. So it initialized the dropdown to my current age range ID. So, because my current age range, age range ID was 4, that is the one that gets selected. Now, what we can't see from the HTML, because the HTML is simply the client side, we can't see that when I go and change that, that gets put back into the, the, the player's ID, uh, player's um, um, age range ID, and gets saved back to the database. We can't see that from the HTML, but we can observe that result by going into Access or going up and editing this again. So I go in and put me in a different age range and update, and there I'm in that age range now. And if I were to look at it in Access, yeah, interestingly enough, it did that update live. I was surprised. I thought I'd have to like refresh it or something but it did it live and showed me that that value has changed to age range 3. Now, this example I showed with a drop-down. You could do a similar thing with other form controls as well, like radio buttons, like um, checkboxes. <coughs> Questions about this? What if I wanted to make it so that password wasn't shown? That's kind of a problem that it shows password. So you just want to show dots? Just want to show dots. I bet there's a property for that. I bet there is a property for that. How do we set that property? In the property screen. Within the property screen. Is it going to be the same one as when you're entering it? You would just set it so it's a pe the, the text input or whatever is a, is a password? Yes. You're right so far, but there's one little piece that's missing. Before we do that, we would have to convert this to a what field? Uh, template template field. All right? Because remember, this is, this is the default. This is how this works. All right? Um, if you want to deviate from that, 
you get a text box. That's, that's the deal. That's all the framework is committed to giving you. If you want to deviate from that and make it a password box instead, then you have to go in and customize it. What does customizing a field mean? It means making a template field. So let's go and let's try to do that. So let's go in and let's look at edit fields. I'm going to pick user password and I'm going to click convert to a template field. Now I can go in and click edit templates and I can pick user password, the edit item template, and now I go and change the property by going into the properties window and so on. And text mode I can select password. Notice that there's a whole, a whole new set of text modes. There's dates and emails and months and so on and so forth. These are HTML5 input controls. Single line, multi line, password, those existed in HTML4, but color, date, date time, date time local, all those are uh, based on the HTML5 specification. So I go make this a password and now when I go and view this, notice it's blanked out. But it wants you to put something in there, yeah. Hmm. So it must not be bringing in your old password. Yeah, it, it isn't because it's a password. Let's go and look to see if we can fix that. It is doing a two-way data binding. How about read only? Did you change, did you change the refresh here? No, because I haven't, I, I haven't changed anything about the data source. I've yeah. simply changed the way it's presented. Yeah, I might be out of luck on this one. The read-only thing won't work. Well, I don't want it to be read-only. I want to be able to change it. Oh, okay. So we'll go and change it back to a single line. That's a problem for another day. I thought that would be straightforward. I did forget that the password control doesn't allow you to. It always starts with a blank. It doesn't show you that. Let me try one more thing with that. No, it, it does not bring in the uh, current password. Yeah, it does not bring in the current password. Let's see. <coughs> well, I guess we're out of luck. When I say out of luck, I don't mean that it's impossible to do it. It means that we can't do it the manner that I it's not, saw. It's not so simple. Not so simple, right. All right. Let's look at Let's shift gears a little bit. And let's, instead of changing 
player information, let's change the other table. Let's change category information. <coughs> so there's, again, there's a million ways that you could do this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create a grid view that has the age ranges in a grid view and allow me to edit and or delete it. All right? Our edits so far have been on a details view. Let's do some on a grid view. So I'm going to make a new page. This page typically would be accessed only by an administrator, right? In other words, I wouldn't want anyone to be able to go and change the age range. Otherwise, you know, they would change the age range to, um, you know, 48 years old and bring Barry Bonds to play for their kids' Little League team or, or something like that. If he's not banned from Little League by now, but anyhow. All right, but I digress. We're not going to worry about the validation that they're an administrator quite yet. We might do that in a future example. But I'm going to go in, I'm going to create a web form, and I am going to call it age ranges. And I'll go through all this. I click add. I'm going to set this as my start page. And I'm going to go in and I'm just going to make a very basic, like we've done a million times already, of a listing of the age ranges. So I'm going to put my grid view and data source. My data source, I'm going to go in, configure, use the same connection, pick the age range and description, order by age range ID, finish. Then I can go here and choose data source, SQL data source 1, and we're in business. If we go and run this, we'll see a list of the age ranges. All right, and away we go. Okay, but this is read-only, right? It's read-only because I only specified a select statement. All right? I only specified a select statement when I created my SQL data source. And therefore, I don't even have an option to enable editing and enable deleting. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to configure my data source. And... I'm going to click Advanced, and I'm going to say Generate Insert, Update, and Delete Statements. All right? We'll do this. Use Optimistic Concurrency. We're not going to talk about that today. I looked at the weather forecast, and today's no day to be optimistic. <laughs> well... Yeah, generally one is optimistic about the future or pessimistic about the future. So, come on, you knew what I meant. Now, you, now, you, now you're just trolling. <coughs> and then I can hit finish. Now, if I want to go and see the SQL statements that it generated, we should be surprised. Select everything from age ID or age range ID, uh, the age range table. The update, update age range set, age range description equal question mark, or age range ID equals question mark. Notice it does not allow me to change the primary key, which is good. The insert, insert into, all right. Actually, there's a little problem with this, but we're not going to do inserts today, so we won't talk about that today. And then finally, the delete, delete from age range, where age range ID equals question mark. So we have our insert, update, and delete. So now we can go and <coughs> if we look at the grid view, we'll see that we have an option of enabling, editing, and enabling, deleting. And as I click that, 
it goes and adds those links for me. Notice it doesn't add an insert, enable inserting. You can't insert on a grid view. Why not? You can't insert on a grid new view. <coughs> I don't know. You, you could if they wrote it that way, but you can't. But it would have to generate a new column. Then. Yeah, it would have to. have to generate a new row, but... But then everything resets. It has to refresh itself. Everything resets. If they get rid of the reset portion of it, then it would work. Because if I well, add a column right now, it's going gonna, it's gonna to regenerate everything. Will reset. Like if we changed age range ID to just ID, it would go back. Well, let, let me let me let me say what uh, you know what people my age frequently said from the year 1969 on, and that is, if they can land a man on the moon, yeah. they should be able to figure out how to do that. Yeah. So I don't have a good reason why they don't allow inserts. All right, um, they don't though. All right, sure there'd be complications, but life is complicated, and they could figure. So I'm not really sure of the strategy behind that, but bottom line is you can. So, so access 10.1. <laughs> All right. So now let's go and look at this. When we do this, by default, the grid view starts in read-only mode. When I click edit, all the fields that are editable, for example, the ID isn't editable because editable it's the primary key, but the age range is, I can go and change it, click update, and then it makes that update. Or I can go and change it and click cancel and it reverts back to its old value. Or I can click delete and it deletes it. It deleted all of them. Oh, I did something wrong, right? Because I thought I I thought I did not say cascade delete. I did click cascade delete. So who else is gone? Everyone. Every person, right? Because it deleted. Got rid of me and Professor Huffman. It's okay, you can just restore it from our backup server. <laughs> yeah, we can. Yeah, right. Yeah, we Call can the go. Database guy. <laughs> yeah, and there goes all those player IDs. And there goes all those player IDs. Yep. So right. there goes one, mm -hmm. two. Mm -hmm. If you were paying attention, I was crying for the loss of our one and two. Yeah, one and two. <laughs> right. Okay. One. So I I did not intentionally. Do that. I must have been clicking it just to, to show you that, but that's what happens when you cascade delete. No, the, All right. The bar went really high yeah, exactly. Because when you delete from one table, it couldn't leave me or Don out there pointing to a non-existent ID. It can't. Remember, when you enforce referential integrity, it's enforced and it stays enforced, which means that. Either it's not going to delete the parent, or when you delete the parent, it's also going to delete the child. This is as good a place as any is to stop, because we'll need to recreate this data anyhow. <laughs> All right. Um, but I think we can see a problem with this. Namely, it didn't ask me to confirm deletion. Right? Um, well, let's, let's, we'll have to figure out how to do that. Right? Um, and guess what it's going to involve? C sharp. JavaScript. Coding. C plus plus. Objective C. Uh, D minus. I'm the only one that knows it right. There's a property. Is there a property? Wow, these are all great answers. At least, at least you're paying attention to the, the basic form. It's going to involve making a template column, right? Because now, what some of the other folks said are eventually going to to be are, are are true as well. But the first step is we want to change something different. We want to change something to be different than the default behavior 
boom, that means a template column. All right. I will upload this example, and we'll start next time by recreating some data, and then we will move from there.